Hey everybody, Dan and Leslie back for another video about Disney dining. This time, we are putting together everything we have learned over the past two years where we have tried every single table service restaurant on Disney World property. I don't know if that's something to be proud of, but man, it's been fun. I'm proud of it. And well. boy, oh boy, can I talk about Disney dining all day long. I mean, there are some fantastic restaurants on property and we are going to highlight the 10 absolute best Disney dining restaurants in our humble opinion. That's a good point. <laughs> Before we get too far into this, huge disclaimer here. And this one is probably going to ruffle less feathers than the one where we do the worst restaurants on Disney oh. property, but I'm just gonna set the stage right now. These are our opinions, and just because our opinions may not jive with some opinions out there, that's fine, that's totally fine. If, if your favorite restaurant did not make it on the top 10 list, um, you know, who knows? Maybe it was just our experience at that one time, or maybe our tastes are different, so. Absolutely, I mean, and that's the thing, that's why, it, there are so many restaurants to try out and they wouldn't all be able to stay in business if somebody out there didn't like them. So, you know, every restaurant is probably someone's favorite. Yeah, and even, and that's one thing about Disney World, there's so many good restaurants. Um, even the ones that we didn't particularly care for or maybe had not the best experience at, like they're still good restaurants. Yeah. Like I, I would never, I would not say there's any bad restaurants in Disney property. There's restaurants that we probably won't be back to, um, but I wouldn't say there's bad, even like Rainforest Cafe, T-Rex, like our least yeah, favorite they're restaurants. Fine. They're fine and lots of people love them. Just not our cup of tea, right? Exactly. All right, let's get into this thing. A couple of honorable mentions. So this is our top 10 list of best table service restaurants on Disney property, but we're gonna remove the two like obvious, like pay out the nose for <laughs> restaurants. So Victoria and Albert's or Monsieur Paul over the France Pavilion and Epcot. We are going to remove those out of this list just because um, they're exorbitantly expensive. And yes, they're fantastic. We gave them five stars out of five stars, but you're paying so much money for those. Um, they're not something that everyone can do, everyone will want to do, not something that we are gonna do a ton. I mean, it's just, I probably will never be back to Victoria and Albert's just because it's, it's just so exorbitantly expensive, even though it was a fantastic experience. Um, these are going to be the 10 best restaurants um, on Disney property that we find affordable enough to at least do for a special occasion or date night. Yeah. Um, so there's that. Take it for what you will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's start at the bottom of the list. So we are going to rank the top 10, but we are going to have a little caveat <laughs> on this first one. Um, so our number 10 uh, restaurant, they are, there's a tie here, right? So. It is between Jico, which is over at Animal Kingdom Lodge. Fantastic, like African flair to it. Very nice meal. Um, has some wonderful wines, some wonderful options to eat. Um, that would probably be my actual number 10. However, California Grill also received a 4.25 on our list. And while we love it and we love the view, it would be, a little higher ranked if it didn't have that prefix menu and we could just order what we wanted off off the regular menu. Yeah, and that's a good point because, um, so in order to compile our top 10, we went back to all of the restaurants um, that we've been eating at over the last two years, my sister, and um, we just looked at the scores. So we ranked everything on a five star scale. And so um, here at the the bottom, like the, the, the bottom, the bottom of the top 10, so still really good restaurants, <laughs> there were multiple restaurants that received received around that 4.25, 4.125 score that could easily kind of nudge their way into the top 10 or maybe nudge their way out of the top 10, if only because of like maybe maybe a server was having a bad day or maybe like the chef maybe overcooked or oversalted something just a little bit and I just received a different score. So, I mean, there's a number of like, so Ohana was right there. There's a number of restaurants that could easily be interchanged right here. These two of all of those that didn't make the top 10, these two were our favorites. I agree, like California Grill, same thing, high, classy, I mean, fantastic ambiance, uh, being like they can see happily ever after. 
Cinder Fireworks over yeah. Cinderella Castle from the restaurant. But fantastic wine list. Um, great, great food. Great, great service. Great for a date night. Same thing with Jico. Um, I really love the, um, the 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 unique quality of the food, being like an upscale African cuisine. Very, very good African wines here. Um, I would not be mad at either of these restaurants yeah. for a nice date experience. The, the prefix menu does frustrate me a little bit at California Grill. That's the one thing that like makes me not want to go back until they they may never do it, but it used to be an a la carte menu. So like we could go, we could enjoy maybe a couple of sushi rolls um, or maybe like a few appetizers, maybe share an entree and then have a couple of desserts, something like that. Mm -hmm. You don't have the option of doing that anymore with yeah. the prefix menu. Quick plug for all of the other dining review videos. If you haven't watched them, go back and watch all of them because there's a lot of really great restaurants out there. So, okay. So we got California Grill, we've got Jico. So coming in at number nine, we're gonna stay over at Animal Kingdom Lodge, and we are going to Boma. Boma is, um, so Boma is right across from Jico. Boma is the buffet. Uh, it is located in uh, Jumbo House, which is the big uh, hotel side of Animal Kingdom Lodge. There's a whole nother building for DVC rooms. Um, that's called Kidani Village, but the main, the big lobby that you always see, like uh, walking in on people's vlogs, going to Animal Kingdom Lodge, that is Jumbo House. You go down the stairs, and um, if you take a right, you're inside Jico. If you take a left, you're inside Boma. This buffet is currently serving breakfast and dinner. Both meals we've had, both meals are fantastic. Both <laughs> meals have that African flair cuisine that you can find for um, not only breakfast, so like the, um, what's the, the Djibouti or whatever, the Bujudi, Bujibuji, Bujibuji, Buji. No, I can't even come. I don't know. To Buji. Yeah, to whatever it is, it's really good. Uh, you get like goat cheese, eggs, things like that. But you've also got like the standard fare that does appeal yes. to kind of like the 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 less adventurous palate out there for yeah. dinner. Um, you get everything from like ham to ribs, which are really fantastic. You've got more African flair things. Um, I love this restaurant because um, we can take anyone who, who just wants to eat a lot because it is an all you care to enjoy buffet yeah. and they can find stuff to eat there. Yeah, and it's pretty reasonably priced for an all you care to enjoy buffet situation. Our 12 year old regularly asks when we're going back to this restaurant because he loves it so much. So, I mean, it can appeal to, and he's always been kind of our picky eater, so it can appeal to a lot of different palates. Number eight, we actually just ate at last night. <laughs> it is at the top of Grand Estino Tower located at Coronado Springs Resort. It's not the easiest restaurant to get to unless you're staying at Coronado Springs Resort. And if you are, I highly recommend making a reservation for this Spanish steakhouse called Toledo. Oh my goodness, this place is amazing. We got the charcuterie, we got the pan con tomate, we've got the, the olives, we had the steak, we had the swordfish, we, oh my goodness, we went with some friends and it just, it was absolutely spectacular. It's been spectacular every time we've gone. The views up there are gorgeous. It's just a really, really well done restaurant. Yeah, their uh, their drink menu is pretty robust. It is right across the way from the Dahlia Lounge, which has a very good drink program, and this shares some of that drink program. So um, they, they have great cocktails. They have fantastic wines from Spain, so grab a nice Rioja when you're up there. It's fantastic. We had one last yeah. night. It was great. Um, the steaks are done very, very well. They are, again, it's a Spanish steakhouse. So, so I would recommend the hanger steak. Mm. Uh, it comes out, it's it's better in my opinion than the filet that you can yeah. get there. And it's, it's wonderful. Um, sustainable fish last night was swordfish. It was very, very good. But when we ate there, I think we shared the ribeye, the, the rib which was also very, very good. So you can get the ribeye for two. I think it's $155, but it comes out with our charcuterie board for an appetizer, another little appetizer, um, a giant steak for two, dessert for two. It's, it's, it's a pretty good meal. And if you do two table service credits, if you have a dining plan, you can get that for the two table service credits. So this one's on the dining plan too, which is which is pretty nice. Yes. Number seven is our, the one we always argue about between Toledo and Topolino's, which one are we going to for date night? Um, but so Topolino's is at the top of the Riviera and that is what's coming in at number seven. Also a fantastic option. If you go get the ricotta, it is, mm, 
So good. That's the that's the appetizer. They have a fantastic old fashioned here. So mm-hmm. definitely get. I think it's called the modern fashion. Mm-hmm. It's wonderful. They also have a very good breakfast. Yes. At Topolino's, and it is probably, at least in our opinion, the best character meal on property. It is an a la carte breakfast um, with. Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Daisy, they come out in their artist attire. They're they so they cute. shake their tail feathers and then they, <laughs> they they dance around and it's it's fantastic. It's done very, very upscale. So contrast that with like your chef Mickey's of the Disney World property where it's more just buffet, get you in, get you out and get out the door. This one, you don't feel quite as rushed and you get to enjoy those characters a little bit more. And I think the food is just a nice option for yes. character dining as well. Yes. Oh. For number six, we're gonna head over to Disney Springs and um, get a little Irish in us. <laughs> so this one comes in at 4.375 in our rating, but we've eaten here multiple times. They do have a fantastic lunch and dinner. They have a really good brunch on the weekends as well. We've had that as well. We're gonna do a dining review about that soon. Um, but Raglan Road is really, really nicely done. It is right in the heart of Disney Springs, kind of right in the middle of everything, Park in the Lime Garage if you're going to uh, Disney Springs specifically to eat at Raglan Road. They also have a quick service uh, restaurant attached to Raglan Road. So that's called Cooks of Dublin. You can walk in there, get fish and chips, or there's a few other options, but my personal favorite is fish and chips. They have got all kinds of things to just make this a fantastic dining experience. They have got entertainment, so they'll have like cloggers um, that can perform inside or outside. They've got stages in both. They've got multiple different bars inside and outside. You can also dine inside and outside. You've got quick service, you've got table service, you've got brunch, you've got regular meals, you've got the classics with fish and chips and shepherd's Mm. pie and all of that. They have a wonderful old, old fashioned here. The service here has always been spectacular. I have very little very few negative things to say about it. I'm trying to think of any negative things to say about it, other than maybe if you go and you're right by the stage, it might be a little loud, but you're gonna be entertained. (laughs) Side note, if you go around St. Patty's Day, you definitely want to make a reservation for St. Patrick's Day specifically. Um, They do a lot of special things for St. Patty's Day and the day of, um, you need to get on the Raglan Road website and specifically the Raglan Road website, not the Disney World website, and look at what they are doing for St. Patty's. Yeah, and there may be a cover charge at times during that week just to, just to be aware of. And if you're wanting help booking any of these fabulous dining reservations, please reach out to one of our fantastical advisors over at Fantastical Vacations, and we can help you plan Disney destinations, Universal, Cruise Lines, and all-inclusive resorts. Also coming in at number five at 4.375 stars is Narcoosie's. This restaurant was fantastic years ago, Mm -hmm. pre-COVID, and they remodeled it and reopened it not that long ago, back in 2023. We ate there a few weeks after it reopened. There was a little annoying part where we had to park across the street if you go back and watch that review, but that was not the fault of the restaurant. That is the Grand Floridian management's problem, and we did not ding the restaurant for that failure. But the food itself is phenomenal. The old fashioned here is just mm, spot on. We love the cuisine. So the uh, surf and turf options, we love the seafood here. Um, We've always had a great experience here. They used to do a brunch here, but that has not come back to my knowledge. Um, And the design of the new restaurant is very, very modern, but also kind of nautical. And it's right there on the water overlooking Magic Kingdom. Yes, oh, it just, I love it there. I love, I love the colors. I love the feel. I love the food. The service is always great. It's just mm, spectacular. Coming in at number four, this one always kind of surprises me a little bit, and I've said it before, is Santa Jelen over at the Mexico Pavilion at Epcot. I always, always look at this menu and I think, no. And then we go and we order something and I'm like, why do we not come here more? Like, it's so good. Um, We had just such a great experience. The ambiance of being right there by the water where the Three Caballeros um, passes by, it's just, that's nice. And then you've got kind of like this dim lit, um, ambiance that just makes it feel nice and cozy. You kind of feel like you're outside, but you're not. The food is really well done. It's just a really good experience. Um, and so we actually rated this at a 4.5 when we went. 
And like I said, surprises me every time, but it is definitely one of the best ones on property. Also coming at 4.5 is Chef Art Smith's oh. Homecoming over at Disney Springs. So right around the corner from Raglan Road is this wonderfully done Southern cuisine inspired restaurant that never fails to amaze. It is just, it's like I never leave Chef Art Smith's without being super, super full, like really, really satisfied with my meal. There's just a lot of food. Now, none of it is health food to my <laughs> knowledge. Like we're talking like fried chicken, dumplings, mm. pies, Those like deviled eggs. chicken biscuits. Yeah, we're, 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 we, this, is not, this is not diet food necessarily. <laughs> However, it is like, it, it is flavorful, it is filling. They have a brunch that is just out of this world. Um, we did our review on just a regular lunch and it was fantastic as well. Hard to get a reservation here at 60 days out, um, but you can walk up and eat at the bar if it's just you or maybe you and one other person and there's seats available. Um, I would highly recommend checking this out, definitely for brunch, but if you can't get brunch, uh, just check it out for lunch or dinner. It is very good. And their cocktails are spectacular. Lots of moonshine cocktails yes. uh, to keep in that Southern cuisine uh, theme. Yes. Coming in at number two is one of our favorites on property. There was actually one uh, trip that we took where I think we ate here. I know we ate here twice for sure <laughs> on one vacation. And that is at the boathouse over at Disney Springs. We love this place. They have a brunch. We just had brunch there actually that is going to be on a, on a video and it's, it doesn't disappoint either. Every meal is wonderful. Service is always every single time we've been, we've never had bad service. Um, the food has always been top notch. It's just, I love the option of getting to eat inside or outside or down on the dock. Uh, it, they, they just have so much to offer. They've got live music. You can eat inside of a boat. You can ride a an amphicar. Yeah. So it's a car that goes on land that they drive out into the lake and you can just tootle around the lake. I mean, you're not driving it, but somebody else is. But um, they have their own gift shop with yeah. clever like boathouse themed shirts. Wonderful drink program. The old fashioned here is great. Highly, highly recommend the boathouse. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. last but certainly not least on our top 10, coming in at number one at 4.75 stars is also at Disney Springs. This one was a little bit of a shock to us as well. <laughs> Well, it is Haleo on the west side of Disney Springs. This one is another Spanish restaurant. There's a lot of tapas. It is so good. Um, you definitely get kind of immersed in that Spanish feel. The tapas have always been wonderful. They come out like, you know, if you've ever eaten at a restaurant that does tapas, they come out just like as they're prepared. So it's just, um, it feels a little more what am I looking for? Like spontaneous, casual. It's kind with of fun. An upscale feel. Like, and when we go with large groups, it's interesting to be like, wait, who ordered that? Like, was that <laughs> was it me? I don't because it's all in Spanish, right? And then they'll have a description of what it is in English underneath it. But yeah. it's like you order like around three tapas per person, and you all kind of share like small bites. So whereas Toledo is a Spanish steakhouse, and you order an entree that is your meal, this is very much Spanish tapas, but uh, very very Spanish themed. Um, Jose Andres is the uh, the the famous chef that created Haleo, um, but you're talking like Iberico ham, again, Spanish wines, you know, um, they've got paella that they used mm -hmm. to have that you could order like just a small plate of, but now it's like you have to order the whole paella meal, but it's fantastic there. Yeah. Um, super love Haleo and their drink program is pretty good. <sighs> that salt air margarita, I kid you not, it is the best margarita I've ever had and that is no joke. I mean, it is so well done with every little sip, you've got this like foam on top that's like got saltiness in it. And with every sip, you get a little bit of salt without getting salt all over your face. So good. So there you have it. We have had a ton of requests to either put out all of our ratings on one piece of paper so you can physically see that, which honestly, we'd rather talk about it like this and explain it, explain why we have ratings. It's so easy to look at a list and be like, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with it. But if you hear like the reasoning behind it and why we love it, at least maybe you can um, understand like where we're coming from yeah. for these ratings. So this is our top 10 restaurants on Disney World property. We will definitely be back to all of these 
again, we went to two of them in the last two days, <laughs> like last night and this after, this this uh, this it's morning been for a brunch. Good food weekend. <laughs> it's, been, it's been great. So, um, all that to say, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this rating of our top ten at Disney World restaurants. Yes, and if you are liking these videos, please hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss the next one, and so you don't miss the worst restaurants on property. Sorry in advance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we will see you on the next video.